I'm Greg Naraki from the Globus customer team at the University of Chicago. We produce this video in response to a question that we see from time to time in our support channels. Someone new to or not familiar with Globus receives an email from Globus notification stating that some data has been shared with them. In the body of this email message, there is a URL to access the share. While there are many different scenarios one could follow to transfer this data, this video assumes that the consumer of this content has little to no experience with Globus, the data was shared with them via an email address, and that the desired destination of the data is their own personal workstation or laptop. So here's an example of an automated email message you might receive from Globus Notification if someone shares data with you using Globus. Checking the email on my data researcher at mail.com account, I see that Dr. Bigwig, under his important researcher at globusid.org identity, used his groundbreaking research guest collection to share the important data folder with me. He's even included a message letting me know how important this data is. Finally, there is a URL that should direct me to exactly where I need to go to get this data. But when you click on this link, you're directed to the auth.globus.org page asking you to log in to use the Globus web app. So where's my data and why didn't it start downloading to my computer? As much as I didn't want to turn this into a Globus 101 presentation, there are some concepts that need to be discussed. At a high level, Globus isn't just a way to download files. It's an extensive and flexible platform for research data management. In order to support that extensibility, Globus uses a hybrid SaaS architecture with both on-prem and in-the-cloud components. Let's look at the first on-prem component, the subscriber control domain. This is Dr. Bigwig's lab where he has set up a managed endpoint by installing Globus Connect server associated with the storage where the data resides. When Dr. Bigwig set up the access to the guest collection for me, he did so by limiting me to a specific area of storage, the important data folder, and giving me read-only access. Now let's examine the cloud component, the Globus control domain. When I clicked on the use this URL to access the share link, I was directed to log in to use the Globus web app. The Globus web app is the user interface to the Globus services. The Globus services will map the identity used to log into it with overlay permissions that will allow a user to access the guest collection. But simply having access is only half the data sharing process. We also need a location to transfer the data to. In the Globus user control domain, we need our own endpoint as a destination for the data. In the use case I'll walk through in a minute, this will be a Globus Connect personal endpoint installed on the same laptop we will access the Globus web app with. A few things to note. The data channel from source to destination does not flow through the Globus control domain. The flow is directly between source and destination and may be encrypted. This makes Globus a very secure and efficient mechanism for data sharing. In order to download from a guest collection, you do not need a Globus subscription. Only one side of the sharing equation needs a Globus subscription, and in this case, Dr. Bigwig's home institution is a Globus subscriber, allowing him to manage his endpoints under that subscription and create guest collections. Our data destination could be an endpoint instantiated with Globus Connect server installed on a research computing cluster at your institution. If the data sets you are retrieving from Dr. Bigwig are very large and you will be moving them to a research computing cluster for analysis anyhow, this might be a wise course of action, as there would be little sense in moving them to your laptop and then back up to a cluster at your RCC when you could transfer them directly. The lesson here is that you might want to check with the research computing center at your home institution. You may have allocated file space on a server that might already be a Globus endpoint. In this case, your laptop running the Globus web app is acting like a remote control for your data. For data transfer tasks that will take a long time, you need not stay logged into the web app. You can log out and log back in, checking on your transfers when you like. Globus will do the babysitting. If the data connection fails, we'll hold off and pick up where things left off when the connection is restored. We can check some of the files transferred at the source and destination, and if they conflict, we will reinitiate the transfer until files move to the destination file system cleanly. When your transfer task successfully completes, you will receive an email indicating that. So fire and forget, we'll take care of the rest. Much of what I'll be covering today 
can be found in the how-to section of our documentation website. Here you will find links that gives you insight into basic Globus functionality, instructions on how to set up Globus Connect Personal for various operating systems, and the ports that must be opened in your firewall in order for Globus Connect Personal to function. For Globus Connect Personal, these are all outbound ports, so if you are on a network that you control, they're likely already open. However, if you are on a more restrictive network in your workplace, it would be a good idea to check with your network administrators to avoid the inevitable support ticket. In order to get the data from Dr. Bigwig, there are essentially three steps. We will use the Globus web app and authenticate to Globus. Since data was shared to us with an email address, we will be invited to link that email to the identity we use to authenticate to Globus, which we'll do to gain access to the guest collection. Next, we will download and install Globus Connect Personal and discover this destination endpoint in the Globus web app. Finally, we will initiate the transfer. Recall the email I received from Dr. Bigwig. He shared his data with me using my dataresearcher at mail.com email address, which is the only identity he knows me by. If we click on the enclosed link, we will be directed to log into the Globus web app. There are several ways to accomplish authenticating to the Globus web app. If your home institution is listed in the Globus login pulldown, you can select it and then hit the continue button. You will be redirected to the identity provider at your home institution where you can log into Globus using your familiar institutional credentials, just like you were authenticating to an application on your campus. You can also authenticate using a Google identity or an ORCID identity. If all else fails, you can use a Globus ID, our own lightweight identity provider. If you click on this link here, you will be directed to use your Globus ID to authenticate. If you don't have one, you can use this link to sign up and obtain one. I'm going to use my ORCID identity to authenticate. If I click the Sign In with ORCID ID button, I'll be redirected to the ORCID sign in page. Using my ORCID credentials, I'll be authenticated to Globus. If this is the first time you have authenticated to the Globus web app using these particular credentials, you will be asked to confirm that the Globus web app can use your credentials to accomplish the task required for transferring a file. You'll also be asked a series of questions, including confirmation of your acceptance of the Globus privacy policy and terms of service. Since I have previously used my ORCID credentials to authenticate, you will not see those steps here. So I'm in. But notice that I've been denied access to the guest collection Dr. Bigwig set up for me. That's because he shared that data with me using the only email address he knows me by. If he had shared the data with me using my ORCID identity, I'd be authenticated to his guest collection and would see the contents of the collection, not the permission denied message. So how do we remedy this? If you notice above, the Globus web app is telling us that the collection we seek was shared to us with the data researcher at mail.com email address. And it gives us the opportunity to link that identity in with the ORCID identity I used to log into the Globus web app. We'll do that now. Clicking the link it now link, will be directed to link an identity. Hit continue to link that in. Since we're using an email address as an identity, we'll be sent a confirmation code to our email address, dataresearcher at mail.com, to receive a confirmation code, which we'll paste in and submit here. We'll be asked to confirm the link by logging in to our primary identity in this case, the identity I just used to log in to Globus. This should be as simple as hitting the continue button. And then re-authenticating with my ORCID credentials. So now we're at the point where we can see the collection and the files that have been shared with us. But how do we get the files to our laptop? One thing I want to cover first is the download option. If you select a file that you would like to retrieve the collection, you notice that this icon is grayed out. From time to time, we receive support tickets from those new to Globus. They see this grayed out and throw up their hands, thinking there is no way to retrieve the files that have been shared with them. This icon is for HTTPS downloading of files and is distinct from the Globus transfer mechanism we are covering in this tutorial. 
If this icon is not grayed out, you can use it to download content directly to the computer you are running the Globus web app on via HTTPS. No need to install Globus Connect Personal. There are reasons for and against making this functionality available, and the rationale for doing so is determined by the owner and administrator of the guest collection, not Globus. So let's create a destination collection to transfer the data to. In this case, a Globus Connect personal endpoint right on my laptop. The steps to do so are simple. Click on the endpoints menu in the left-hand taskbar, and then create a personal endpoint in the upper right-hand side. Click on Download Globus Connect Personal. In my case, my laptop is running Mac OS, so that is the software I'll be downloading. Recall the links on our how-to page shown at the beginning of the presentation for detailed instructions for Mac OS as well as other operating systems. Once the Globus Connect Personal installer is downloaded, I'll run it and follow the instructions for installing it on my laptop. In this case, by moving the application file to the application directory, which I will then run. The Globus Connect Personal application will prompt me to log in. Since I am technically already logged into the Globus web app, I will be prompted to allow Globus Connect Personal to use my linked identities for the various tasks it needs. I can give this series of consents a label so they are easily discoverable in the Globus Accounts menus should I choose to later revoke them. Once I provide the label and click Allow, I'll be directed to give my collection a label and description. I'll make note of the High Assurance checkbox here. Unless your institution has a High Assurance Globus subscription and will manage your Globus Connect personal endpoint under that subscription, do not check this box. Otherwise, your Globus Connect personal endpoint will not work and you must then delete it and reinstall it. Once you click the Save button, Globus Connect Personal will install and give you confirmation of successful setup. You can then exit the setup process. With Globus Connect Personal installed, let's now return to the File Manager menu. You might have the Globus Web App running in single pane mode. I prefer dual pane mode so I can see both the source and destination collections. In the case of Mac OS, indication of a running Globus Connect personal endpoint can be found in the taskbar. By clicking on the icon, you can see the status of your endpoint as well as control aspects of the endpoint. This includes the directories on your computer that will be accessible by Globus Connect Personal. I'm going to leave this as the default, with the indicated directory path being where the files will reside once transferred. There are other tutorials that cover Globus Connect Personal in depth, and I again refer you to the how-to page and the instructions for your specific operating system for additional details. At this point, we see the source collection on our left. By clicking on the collection text box on the right-hand side, you will be directed to search on the collection we intend to use for the destination. We could type the name of the Globus Connect personal collection we used when we set it up, but it is simpler to click on the Your Collections tab, where the Globus Collect Connect personal collection will appear. Click on that collection and you will be directed back to the File Manager page, where you will see your Globus Connect personal collection in the right-hand pane, in all the files that are on your local computer in the directory listed in the Globus Connect Personal Preferences menu under the Access tab. I'm going to navigate to an empty directory on my Globus Connect Personal endpoint so things look a little cleaner. On the source side, I could select these files either individually or in groups. I'm going to select both of these files and transfer them by hitting the Start button here. You'll see that the transfer task has been submitted and we could click on the activity menu here on the left hand side in order to check on the progress of the task but we're just going to let that go and complete. So we see successful completion of the transfer task. If we go to our destination endpoint and click refresh we'll see that the files have indeed been delivered. If we look at our file browser we can also see those files present. For more information visit our website or our documentation site. Thanks for watching.